Bad Batch, Season 2 Thoughts, Star Wars Show, and yeah, there will be spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this entire season throughout this video. And let's dive right in, if I can find the thing, and yes, so, episode one of season two, The Spoils of War. And... There we go. So, the... Yeah, yeah um... Very cool chase. Didn't expect to see Bad Batch visit the beach from Moana. And yeah, Omega is bored with homework, but later uses it to save the day, which is a very good message. And I see that the members of the Bad Batch have all got new action figures. I mean, they altered their looks for no merchandising reason whatsoever. And the point is made that the Empire will lead to less freedom. And just gonna, yeah. As, as it should be. Great cliffhanger ending. And that brings us to the second episode, Ruins of War. Dooku stool from the stole from his own people, which many fascists do. It's not about who is and is not on their side, it's about who they can take advantage of, how they increase their power. Toys make you happy, and that's much better than any jewel. Good message. Before the war, we were not separatists, we were Sarans. I never thought of it that way. Yet another good point. Very cool when Wrecker uses the big gun and the reason Omega is so obsessed with getting some of the treasures that she overheard, the reason you don't have a normal life is because of me. You know, and, and like many children, she feels undue weight and responsibility. She thinks that she needs to solve these problems. Yeah. Really love the snark of Romar in these two episodes. And the clone officer's report proves the 99 survived season one finale, which the Imperial officer needs hidden uh, from Tarkin, even if that means killing the clone officer. Fascism rewrites history, including sometimes killing their former allies. And I just realized I completely forgot to, so I will... Okay, so the following is supposed to go at the start of this video, um, but I'll do it now. <clears throat> yeah, I love every single episode of the show so far, and yeah, since I won't get into the following every single episode section of this video, I'll just briefly say, every episode so far has great creativity and designs, the action is engaging, very well choreographed, I'm invested in stories and characters, and yeah, I still don't mind Omega, it's, you know... Let's see, yeah, anything I don't comment on, pursue my approval of, not that there's only going to be negative, and I will be talking about the messages it communicates, in part about fascism, since Star Wars has always been in part about warning against fascism. Episode 3, The Solitary Clone. We do not negotiate another fascist trait. Crosshair meets back up with Commander Cody. They talk about how gradually clones are turning on the Empire, expressing free thought. Uh, you might say, and Crosshair says they're all traitors. Based on the end of the episode, maybe Cody was testing Crosshair. If Crosshair was ready to defect, maybe he himself was just getting close and needed a push. First things first, I'm a craftsman. Very tense when they fight the first destroyer droid. Incredibly tense when the two clones fight against droids really up close near the end. At first, Commander Cody doesn't want to hear what the governor has to say, but she does manage to convince him to the point where he lays down his gun, refuses to shoot despite being ordered, but Crosshair shoots without a second thought. At the end of the episode, Crosshair's getting... Is, uh, yeah, uh, he's, he's yet again alone in a crowd, like at the start of the episode, we the audience wonder if maybe this is starting to get to him, and the, you know... This reminds me of that episode of Rebels where Zed and Callus have to spend some time on a moon together and it ultimately leads to his defection. Not clear in that particular episode, but, you know, 
he goes back to base and feels alone. Episode 4, Faster, Baby. I like that Teo doesn't take any attitude from Tech, who is, of course, still anti-droid, since until recently, that was who he was fighting. You know, good anti-racist message. Like with the races on Resistance, I am more emotionally invested than in the one Phantom Menace. It feels less forced in. Until it was revealed that Tech would do it, I seriously thought this episode would have Omega Race, which would have been pretty silly. Like, you know, I like the character group, but she's a child. She shouldn't be racing. Yes, I meant to do that. And not a fan of Teo's body horror being played for laughs. You know, it's a Star Wars continues to have a problem with how they have, you know, the, the way droids are represented in Star Wars. I regret nothing. Even all those insults towards tech? Okay, I do regret those. They should have been way harsher. I need more speed. Would you say that you have a need for speed? Not to be confused with a need for need for speed, the movie, which nobody needs. Very exciting race. I wasn't surprised when Tech won, but I was still relieved. Like, it was very tense. Episode 5, Entombed. That story changes every time she tells it. Watch out for sea monsters, Beowulf. I'm sure your imagination's teeming with them. Fee talks them into a treasure hunt. I quite like Fee. Um, I've always liked Wanda Sykes and just, uh, yeah. Great to have her in Star Wars. This is older than the Jedi. As old as the mistaken notion that you can make a good movie out of a video game unless it's a press start movie or a good video game that's licensed from a movie and isn't the original Aladdin or the 2010 TMNT. This is too easy, like convincing a Republican to do something stupid that's probably acting against their own self-interest. That is one huge robot. It's difficult to convince Fee to care more about their own safety than the treasure. And they managed to turn off the robot at the last minute. You go. I stay. Well, yeah, you're completely broken. And she's already thinking about the next treasure she's going to looking for. I really like Fee. And episode 6, Tribe. Omega rescues Gunji. Gunji uses the Force and a lightsaber. No wonder he's afraid of the Bad Batch. They will not attack if we don't pose a threat. This is true of a lot of animal life in the real world. And the Wookiees practice nature worship, the closest we have to a good type of religion. Always glad to see that pop up in Star Wars. You know, also a big thing for the Ewoks. Very cool fight when they're surrounded by fire. And the spiders take out the Trend Ocean. Holy crap, that got dark. And episode 7. The Clones Conspiracy. Or Clone Spiracy, if you will. If what we did was not wrong, why the cover-up? You are asking the right questions. Fascism does not survive scrutiny, so anything that can be a problem is covered up, denied, etc. Senator Chuchi, the badass, and she tries to help the clone troopers with pension. They don't want to hear it. Rex rescues Chuchi. I love the way it was shot. It really did look like she was going to be shot. The, the way it was filmed, I mean. Looked and... You are too limited. What does that make you? Unlimited. Like breadsticks. And he had a suicide pill hidden in a tooth. That's how far they're willing to go. And I like the sci-fi twist that it's like electrifying, you know. Let's see. And that's... I don't know. Is that less dark than cyanide for the kids? I don't know. Episode 8, Truth and Consequences. I could still be a prisoner. Or worse, I could be appearing on the Resistance show. Yeesh. And they're going to steal the log. Clones do not currently have representation in the Senate. Sadly, in real life right now, some minority groups are not represented in democracy. No one is fighting to secure their rights. Trans people are losing their rights in America. Very tense. I really love when the alarm goes off and they're swarmed with stormtroopers. 
and the senator, senator manages to prove the admiral attacked Camino. The emperor has the admiral arrested, claims it was his personal agenda, uses it to further his own ends. Fascism covers up what he can't use, controls the narrative. We're seeing this with the Republicans and other conservative parties right now. <coughs> Episode 9, The Crossing. Be very careful. I know. That made me chuckle. The ship is stolen. That is some stampede. I just know some lions are in danger here. Omega feels like the ship is home. Doesn't want to lose it. If the shot is not precise, we will get a cave in. We need a cave out, without caveats. Tech is coded as being on the spectrum when he's dealing with... When he's dealing with a subject where he knows his stuff, there's basically no one better. No one is more skilled. But when it comes to interpersonal relationship, he struggles to understand other people, perhaps especially Omega. Unfortunately, this isn't something they explore a lot when really could have been as frequent an element as Niku and Resistance. You know, both of them are regular characters, appear in almost all episodes, and... I don't know if they're going to be able to bring it back after the end of this season. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time someone survived something ridiculous in Star Wars. But, but yeah. Um, let's see. That brings us to episode 10. Re retrieval, not revival. And Mako barely gives Benny any water, despite the big score. And the various members of the Bad Batch stop Benny together. That was fun. They only have 60 seconds to get to get in. They're going mountain flossing, which is repelling. Hunter gets in at the very last second. Am I the only one who got like Mission Impossible 2 flashbacks at that scene? Wow, someone working on this episode really loved the idea of Wrecker growling at Benny. I'm not saying I disliked it. I'm just saying I think three times was at least one time too many. You know, I think some of these miners are miners. So the top earner gets enough food. The rest have to fight over a portion that looks like it's barely enough for one person. Capitalism is a pyramid scheme. Benny wishes Mako treated him like the rest of the Bad Batch treat Omega. Omega shows Benny Mako is actually earning a lot. He's just keeping the profits to himself. Maybe he wants a super yard. Doesn't think he has enough... Bedrooms or houses. We don't miss. Badass. Marcus so shattered by Drake like Lil Wayne and Lara Croft. And let's see. But but yeah, really appreciate, you know, like even you know, yeah, they're doing wrong, but they're still like you know, them being exploited is still bad and wrong. <coughs> And that brings us to episode 11, Metamorphosis. Really love the horror movie opening to this episode. Really reminds me of Alien. I know what Palpatine is planning, and I'll have no part of it. Somehow Palpatine returned. My gray ass he did. Omega does not want them to split up, which tells me she's watched a horror movie. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. We get a good look at the creature. Yeah, it is kind of a PG xenomorph. They took the mature elements out of it. The creature got much bigger, and the Empire is not killing the creature, but taking it. Oh, right, it is the Zillow Beast, and it has indeed been cloned, like was implied in Clone Wars. And, you know, maybe it's part of cloning Snoke and or Palpy. Like, certainly, there's a certain resemblance between Snoke and the Zillow and the Empire didn't want to end cloning, they wanted to control it. And that is, again, something fascism does a lot. They'll claim they want to end something that their citizens hate, but they actually just want to take control of it. Hitler preached peace before he started war. And the cloner tells the Imperial about Omega. And that brings us to episode 12, The Outpost. Love a good ice base setting. Crosshair meets Officer Nolan, who says it's time to go make Witters of Maine and major characters to motivate them. Says, though, Oppenheimer was the bomb. The rest of my men are dead. We got thinged pretty hard. I'm in charge here. Do you feel in charge? I love the message that respect is something you earn, not just get. 
There's an attack on the base. The explosion messes up Crosshair for a little while. Kids love Grunty the Clone. Pressure mine. Some of yours too, I think. I love that the Raiders' eyes glow red in the dark. I wonder if their voices are also squeaky. Officer Nolan lets Mayday die. He was expendable. So he only gets a new movie after nine years? The episode lays it on pretty thick with the anti-fascism by making Officer Nolan so despicable. I love it. Great ominous ending. We don't quite know what they're going to do to Crosshair. If you relax, you might just survive. Is she saying he's in bad shape, or is it a threat to get him to comply? I like that kind of, you know, yeah, we don't quite know. Episode 13, Pabu. You're going to have to work harder than that to kill me. God, I love Fee. And Sid threatens every member of the Bad Batch, including Omega. Pabu does seem like a really great place for the Bad Batch. Wrecker is full, something that has never happened before. Like, even, you know, a tech is like, I'm going to make a record of, you know, this, yeah. We never stay in one place for long. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. Don't worry about Tremors. According to Obscurus Lupa, it's a perfectly decent series of films. We haven't heard the early warning system, and we immediately hear it. Cute joke. Thank the stars, especially RDJ. He killed an Oppenheimer. So this episode conveys well to a young audience that nature can be both beautiful and dangerous. Important message. Uh, and they do decide they're going to stay there. I like this status quo change. After a while, it stops making sense for them to be working for Sid. And it's also, you know, a, a good status quo change to shake up things, to, to make it feel more, you know, like this is a show where not a lot of major main characters die. So, yeah, changing the status quo is a good way to make it feel more dynamic. Episode 14, Tipping Point. Echo and the other clones are very effective against the transport. Another suicide pill. Very tense opening, especially when the Star Destroyer shows up. And thankfully they escape. And Crosshair is offered Dark Lane Slate. Crosshair is tortured. The Doctor actually has to stop to make sure that he literally doesn't die. Manages to shoot the troopers, but he only stuns the Doctor. And he does manage to send a message, but is caught. Tech is giving Omega flying lessons. Very dad is teaching one of the teenagers to drive, and the teenager is just driving way too fast recklessly, and he's concerned. Energy. Echo suggests they ra race to the landing zone. Omega happily joins in, while Tech is like, I don't think that's a good idea. And, yeah, they consider it maybe a trap, since it wouldn't be the first time Crosshair has set a trap for the rest of the Bad Batch. And that brings us to the penultimate episode, episode 15, The Summit. We don't leave our own behind. You have to take your own behind with you wherever you go. Be precise. And everyone turns around and looks at Wrecker and he's like, What? I can be precise. <laughs> and this episode shows fascists doing experiments without consent, which is sadly absolutely true. That happens in real life as well. A lot under the Nazis, for example. Oh, hey, I saw Guerrera. And the cliffhanger leading into the finale is that the Bad Batch are stuck on the sky rail, very gripping. And that brings us to the season finale. Episode 16, Plan 99. I really love that the opening doesn't like immediately resolve the thing. First, we get several shots that just you know, underline how, how dangerous it is. You know, I'm, I'm not sure anybody actually managed to forget. I don't know how you would do that. The, the danger that they were in, but still, yeah. And yeah, incredibly tense episode. This is a super good, this is how you do like a season finale. Just amazing. And tech self-sacrifices. Good to see Azzy again. And Omega grieves the loss of Tech. And let's just, there we go. Nope, that's not going to do it. There it is. 
and Sid betrayed the Bad Batch. Wrecker is caught. Hunter gives himself up. Come with me if you want your friends to live. And yeah, the Wrecker and Hunter get free and fight Stormtroopers. Super cool. And, you know, Echo got into uh, an ATST. Yes, I insist on still calling them that. It just, yeah, really lays waste to enemy forces. So yeah, basically, Season 3 is going to have the Bad Badge trying to get Omega back. You know, good way to end a, a season, you, you know, although I suppose, considering that a chunk of the fan base hate Omega, maybe they won't care that much, but yeah. Let's see, and yeah, Omega sees Crosshair, but he's, you know, recovering. You trust the cloner, but not me. That's ironic, don't you think? Omega, we're sisters, and sisters are doing it for themselves. And, yeah, that's that's a cool twist. I did not see that coming for her. And, yeah, like, the... the yeah, there's that can be a very interesting dynamic. She hasn't had a sister until now you know she's only had brothers yeah um that is it for this episode so yeah um an updated ranking yeah ranking worst to best keeping in mind other than resistance i love all of them they're all amazing i'm ranking how much i love them not whether or not i love them all and yeah whether we're talking overall season season finale or season opener you know yeah at the very bottom Resistance Season 1, right above that, Resistance Season 2. And other than that, basically each season of a, you know, of one of these is better than the last. Um, I do still consider Visions, you know, yeah, Vision Season 1 and Vision Season 2 right above these two seasons of Bad Batch. But yeah, um, that's absolutely amazing. I'm, I, it's so good to see Star Wars doing so well. You know, having such great. Well, you know, I guess financially not as well as they'd like, but yeah, I, I, it's 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 much better than some of the lesser Star Wars. And that is it for this one. So next week, I'll have the details momentarily. Yes, I expect next week, possibly specifically next Tuesday, to do season one of Tales of the Jedi. And let's see. And yeah, the week after that, Young Jedi Adventures season one, including the shorts. And then I'm completely caught up on Star Wars other than Ewoks and droids, of course. And, yeah. Um, yes, that is it for this one. May the Force be with you.